Hello and welcome to the Modern JavaScript 2020 course part 2. In this section we're going to be covering JavaScript and HTML. How we embed JavaScript into HTML documents and link them and so on. Okay, uh, options to put JavaScript into HTML. We can embed JavaScript in line, and that means in in line with the HTML code. So you have lines of HTML code mixed up with lines of JavaScript code. And the way we do this is we use a script tag. So within the HTML document, which is, for example, this one, um, we have the HTML doc type uh, comments for job HTML, a HTML tag, body tag, body tag, HTML closing tags. And here we have a script tag which says script type equals text stroke slash JavaScript. So this is telling uh, the browser that whatever's contained between these script tags, this opening script tag and the closing script tag, is uh, sh should be interpreted as a JavaScript uh, command or code that can be run. When um, when 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 a page loads, any JavaScript will be uh, run immediately. So that means if they if there does JavaScript command, uh, it will be run immediately. But sometimes but sometimes we want to run JavaScript commands or code only at certain times. So to do this, we put the code in a function, and then the, func the code is contained within the function, and we call the function when we need it. For example, when we click on a button, we don't want the button to be clicked all the time. Um, so, um, yeah, so we, we put the code in a function, and then we say, when there's an on-click event happens to that button, we run the code and everything works smoothly. For example, on-click event when we click a button, as just mentioned. JavaScript can be code can be put in the head section of the HTML document or the body section of the HTML document, it, depending on um, your preferences. But remember the HTML document is um, processed from the top to the bottom and if you um, are referencing HTML elements like labels or form elements within the JavaScript and your JavaScript is at the beginning of the document and the JavaScript may run and it will find that there's no such element within the um, uh, within the browser or within within the, the document and that's because the um, JavaScript is being run before that HTML element has been loaded into the browser so there's a timing problem there that you have to be care that you have to be aware of uh, you may just have to at the beginning you may have to just define a function and call the function at the end of the document and um, so be aware of that, you'll get some strange behaviour from web pages when JavaScript is being run and the HTML elements haven't been loaded yet. There is a, a way of checking um, that the HTML is loaded called a ready. Uh, so if you look at the ready event, you can confirm that the HTML document has been completely loaded and then you can run your JavaScript to manipulate the HTML elements. Okay, moving on to the next. Number two, uh, embed JavaScript in line. So this is in the head section. Uh, again, we've got a reference here where we've got HTML head and we're putting the script tag this time after the head tag and between the closing head tag. So we're putting the script in uh, JavaScript code within the head tag and as you can see on the right hand side here 
we've got the output which is a, an, a, an alert box when we run this command called alert welcome which is a javascript command but as you can see in javascript um, the code here between script tags we have defined a function called pop-up which is pop up the dialog box and what that does is it runs a javascript command called alert with the text message called welcome and when you call this function pop up it will run alert and bring up a dialog box with the um yeah with the, with the message and look further down we can see on the body section we've got an event called body on load equals pop up brackets what this means is that um, the onload is an event which is how which takes place on the body element so it means when this body element is loaded or the body section of the document is loaded run this command called pop up which is the javascript command defined in the head section and when the pop up command runs it will bring up this uh, dialog box uh, shown here saying, saying welcome so that's embedding javascript in the head section if we go to the next section now which is section three um, we embed javascript in line head and body javascript can be embedded both in the head and in the body it may be that you want certain things to run in the head of the HTML document when the document's first opened and then you may find you may want to run other JavaScript code uh, in the body or the end of the body in the body section of the um, HTML document so what we do here is we we declare a function so in the head we say script and we declare a function called pop-up so as before and then on the body on load pop up we've got the same function running as before and that will bring up this alert dialog box so we call the pop up function when the body loads and then in the body section we have another script element script tag with javascript code in there now this is document dot write is a javascript command which is saying on the document object which is the document object is your html document that you just loaded and dot write is a com is a method on that document which is saying gonna grab that document and write a some text to it and what it will do is it will write welcome to so it will uh, write some the text welcome to into the html document and um, html will browser will just think that's just another piece of html information and um, text information so we've declared the function in, so there's two sections of javascript we have in this document we declare the function in the header and we call the function in the body on load section and then we have a script tag in the body as well Okay, next uh, item, number four, section number four, external JavaScript file. What if we want to write all our JavaScript into a, in a separate file and then just reference it from our HTML document? Um, then that means you can include files from other companies, from files you've downloaded, or files, JavaScript files that you have, which do different um, operations or have different uh, functions or code uh, libraries built into them. JavaScript, external JavaScript file within HTML. So JavaScript can be embedded in line as we've seen before and we can um, so we can link to it, linked into a HTML document and by using the script tags and the 
source tag. So here we go. So we have script, and then what we do is so we say src equals something file name dot js. And file name dot js is dot js is extension for a JavaScript file, and the source means um, that is going to be the source of your JavaScript that you need to uh, re uh, find. So looking at our source code for an example HTML file called test1.html, we have the doc type which is the defining HTML5 document. Then we have HTML tag, then we have head, header uh, section, and as you can see here we have the script tag. And within the script tag we have, it says script is type JavaScript, so text JavaScript, so we interpret the code in this script as JavaScript. And then it says the source of the JavaScript is contained in a file called test1.js, so it will go and find this file in the same directory as your HTML file, open it up and run the JavaScript code in there. And as you can see, it's we have this body section on load pop-up event is as before. So if we take this um, code and we put it into a we put it into a editor. So we can put it in here, save it. And then we open the browser, there we go, okay so let's go back to that, so we have, what we've got here is Your Visual Studio code with your uh, with your HTML code in there, and we've also got another file here at the top called test one a dot js, which is our JavaScript file, and that's got a function in there: pop up, alert, welcome, and so on. Okay, so we're linking from test1.js here, from the HTML document to the JavaScript file, test1.js, and there's a function defined in there. And what we need now is um, to run this code in a browser, so let's get our browser. This is um, Google Chrome browser and what we're going to do is load up that HTML. So let's close that section and here we've got test1a.html. Let's refresh this page and what do you know? You get the dialog box which says this page says welcome one equal 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 signs. Okay. Okay so this one doesn't put any text out on in the HTML part of it, document itself. So if we have a look at the uh, examine the source code on this um, file program that we've just run. So if we go here, and now we can see the test1.html source code which we were looking at in the browser. And you can see there's the script tag and the text JavaScript and the source is test1.js as we saw earlier, which is fine. So going back to our HTML document, we can look at the web console, the developer web console, and here we go. So this is going to be looking at, so there's an example here, it shows you the, um, um, the, the, the this is the web page and this is the HTML. And again, it's the same HTML, test1.script, test1.js, and the body load section. 
as before. So it's just running at the, looking at the HTML. So if we go to our um, source file, test1.js, let's see if we can open that. Reveal in sources panel. So let's have a look at that. So now we've opened up our test1.js in our web developer console. So we've got two files here. Uh, test1.html, which is on the left side, and test1.js, um, which is the, fun the file that we called our, that we call our um, JavaScript from. So as you can see, this is the JavaScript file showing in the web developer console, and we can uh, examine it, confirm that everything is working. Okay, this is our Visual Studio case, so let's close that. So we've shown that this um, linking to a JavaScript file is working correctly. And this is an HTML document, check source code, and the test one I So let's just change that. So that's test1.js. And we've got, so we'll, this is JavaScript source code we've got. Yeah, so it's, we define a function pop up. Okay, so that's that section done. Moving on to the next item. Number five, statements in JavaScript. Now, statement in JavaScript is, a JavaScript program is basically a set of commands to the browser telling it what to do. Uh, a set of commands that the browser understands because the JavaScript engine is built into the browser. Each command is run in the JavaScript file starting from the top of the file to the bottom. So remember when you're running a command in the file make sure whatever it's referring to has been loaded already. If it's that item is being loaded later on, then it's not going to work because that item doesn't exist at the point. Okay, so simple JavaScript commands are like statements are alert.welcome with a semicolon. The semicolon is used to um, identify the end of your statement and it's good for general practice. For it's good, um, you know, coding practice, right? Put semicolons in the right places, and it tells the browser when the statement is finished, and it also tells other people looking at the code or maintaining your JavaScript code the end of the statement is at that semicolon. And so, what we do here is we have a look further in this section. Down below, and we've got a HTML JavaScript file which is down here, and in there we have a script tag, text JavaScript, and in there we have we're running this command called document write. And all this does is it just writes from this right is this is within JavaScript, so it's, it's writing this text okay, contained in quotation marks out to the to the HTML document and um, when the browser receives that text, it, tr it translates it into HTML. So it says, oh, this is a H1 HTML tag. So, you know, uh, it converts into HTML uh, format and formatting on your web page, which is fantastic. So we've got three, the document is the, um, refers to your HTML document and write is a command on that document or method it says write out the text to the HTML document. And we've got three here. So we've got heading one, two and three. Uh, we've got colours red, green and yellow. And also we've got text one, H1, H2, H3. And on the
on the right hand side you can see the output that you would get in a browser so we can do this as ourselves so let's copy this code into our editor which is here which is visual studio code so we say put it in there and we save and then we open up our browser which is this one and we do control r refresh which means re re refresh that page and it loads that page up and it's showing the text one h2 text h3 um, as we would expect and if we do control u we can look at the source code which is what we saw earlier in the editor and if we do control shift i we can see the uh, html code in the, the web in the web developer console as well and when you um, when you highlight something in your web developer console it's automatically highlighted in your in your win browser window on the left hand side and you can see you can cross reference your html code to your browser output which is very useful for debugging so if we were to um, what you can do is you can for testing things and um, trying different things out you can also So you can edit the HTML in your web developer console and then what we do on this side is we rerun but it's still going to the other one. So we need to do, so alternatively what we can do is um, choose this inspect element, it says select an element in the page to inspect it. So if we go to H1. It um, gives you all the properties, it gives you the size of the box, everything in HTML, every item, every object is contained within a box. This is called the, um, the box model. It's a H1 tag with 277 pixels by 37 pixels, color red. And font type that it's been using, the margin around the text and so on so that gives you lots of information about your web page h2 tag um h3 tag so you can do this with any page you can download a web page from amazon.co.uk or any website and then open up the web developer console and look at the web page and see how it's been designed and built and it's very good for education and learning build it for building your own pages Okay, so that was statements, that was num item number five, and statements in Java, thank you. Okay, moving on to number six, JavaScript blocks. Now, a block in JavaScript is a, is a block of code, is a, is a set of code that um, we've defined in JavaScript. So, if you have mil you know, thousands of lines of code, then you need to manage your line, your code, and one way to do that is to have put into blocks of code and then put into functions and put into files so you can organize it hierarchically and not get confused or make mis mistakes in your lines of code. A JavaScript program is composed of statements, which is um, blocks, expressions and keywords. Now, a statement is a line of code, like here, that ends with a semicolon. For example, we've got this statement down here, document write, so on, and semicolon at the end, saying that's the end of the statement. A block is a set of lines of code within curly brackets. So, for example, within curly brackets, so we can define a block within this script tag. We can define a block of code and say this is a block of code. 
So we've got curly brackets here and opening curly brackets and closing curly brackets. And that, that defines this self statement as a block. Also, we have expressions in um, JavaScript. Uh, an expression is a combination of keywords. So an expression may be something like style equals color red. Um, that you know, could be an expression. It's, it's, um, it's, it's a number of couple of keywords and data combine, combined into an, exp uh, an expression, usually with an equal sign or a plus sign or a multiplication sign of some kind. So it's combining two or more keywords. That is an expression. A keyword is a single word in JavaScript and it represents a command or a function. So for example, style. Uh, for example, style would be could be a keyword in HTML. Write is a keyword in JavaScript and so on. There's still lots of different kinds of keywords in JavaScript. All of the language is made up of keywords. Okay, that's um, that's all. That's all for now. So what we can do is we can try and put this in a. Um, we can try and put this code in an editor and see what happens. So let's go to our editor, put the code in there, and we've got that, save it, and we go to our browser and we say, okay, we want to have a look at that code. We will run that code, we run the code, and there's no difference. Um, because the curly brackets don't do anything, they just, you know, they, they just use to manage the code in the source code. And we've got the same text one, h2, h3. But if we have a look at the source code, let's see if we can find our curly brackets. So here are our curly brackets in the source code in the original HTML document. So they define a block of code, which is this block of code. So that's really great. So, okay, so going back to our document, so I think that's all for this item. Now moving on to our next section. Section 7, JavaScript comments. Now JavaScript comments, JavaScript comment may have, JavaScript program may have comments. Now comment is a piece of text in, in a program that's not um, used by the um, compiler. It's not used by the JavaScript engine for anything. It's purely there for information purposes for human beings. So you might put comments in a JavaScript file or a program to explain what your program is doing or what it's referencing or what the data was written, who wrote it, what it does. It may, may well just be documentation. But it's very useful to put comments in because if you're maintaining somebody else's code, you join a company and you start a job and you're maintaining a, a set of web pages or applications that somebody else has written and they have no comments then it might be difficult to understand what certain what you know what the code is doing but if you have good comment commenting standards then you know the comments will give you hints as to what the program is doing and why it's doing that there's so two types of comments you can have a comment on a single line and that's shown with uh, forward slash so you have forward slash forward slash so anything like this is a single line comment so anything after the forward slash the JavaScript engine will ignore it you can have multi-line comments if you need lots more comments and they begin with multi-line comments here and they begin with a forward slash star and finish with a star slash and you can have multiple lines of comments um, for example here you can this is a multi-line comment you know comments are very commenting is very very useful in uh, de developing and testing and building JavaScript applications and web applications 
because what you can do is you can write lots of um, JavaScript code and if it's not working correctly you want to eliminate some JavaScript code from the execution to find out which part is going wrong so you might think oh this line of code is is going wrong or is um, so what you can do is um, comment out the other lines of code and rerun the program and if and then only that line of code is being run that you suspect and if the error is still happening then you know that that is the re that line of code is is causing the problem um, so if it's not the error stops her working happening then you know that the, the error is in the lines of code that you commented out so you can you know you can hide or eliminate the sections of your JavaScript program by commenting it, it think lines out uh, making JavaScript lines of code into comments stops their execution. This is useful when building, debugging, applications or code testing. Okay, well that's all for now. Let's have a look at a quick look at um, uh, a program and another piece of code. So what we're going to do in Visual Studio Code here is um, this is a JavaScript section, so we're going to put some. That's a single line comment, as you can see. The color turn, ch color changes to green, and we can put a multi-line comment in there as well. And we say this is document right. Color turn so this, and what we do is we just put. A slash there, and so we have two line. We have single line comment here, and a multi line comment. So we've commented out the H two and the H three. So we'll save this document. We'll save this HTML file, and we'll go back to the browser and we'll load that up. Okay, so let's refresh this page. And we see, as expected, only the text H1 is shown because we commented out H2 and H3. So let's have a look at the. So if we do Control U, uh, we can see the source code of the page, this page, with the HTML behind it. And there we go, test1.a.html source code. And it says view source code at the top here. And let's have a look at that. Okay, if we look in the magnifying glass, we've got reference to our file, Bain's InfoTech, Modern, JavaScript 2020, Assets, Course 2A. And if we go further down, we've got For view source, so we're looking at the viewing the source code of this file, and the file is called test1a.html. And on the side, this browser, which is test1.html, which is our output, our program, and then if we go back to the other one, we've got test1.html source code. And in this document, we can see our single line comment that we just added earlier on. And that's commenting on H2, so that's not running. HTML is just ignoring it. Or JavaScript engine is just ignoring this this command, document all right. And it's never sent to HTML. This one again is multi line comment, and this one we're saying in JavaScript block, so, um, between the JavaScript tags, saying this is a multi-line comment so just ignore this section so that's how commenting works that's all for this um, part of the course and um, thanks very much have a good day